Good evening, everyone. My name is Phil Santomero. I'm one of the assistant heads at Crestwood Preparatory College, and I'll be your MC for today. I'd like to welcome you all to Crestwood Preparatory College's grade 12 graduation ceremony for the class of 2023. Thinking of this class, I really don't view you as a group, but rather as 88 unique individuals. Each of you have been able to find your own unique path here at Crestwood. All 88 of you have your own strengths and abilities, and you have been able to develop and nurture these talents while being part of a wonderful community. Today is a day to focus on you, our graduates. How you come up on stage, get your diploma, pose, and have your pictures taken by your loved ones, the people that helped you to get to this moment. I want to congratulate you, your parents, your relatives, your teachers this evening. Today marks 13 years of hard work and determination by all to reach this moment. The arguments that took place at the kitchen table about completing work, the late evenings completing projects or studying for tests, working on homework in the car, on the bus, at the rink, or in the gym. All of these have combined to lead to your success. And knowing that you have your parents, guardians, teachers and friends here to support you has been an important part of your success. Graduates, I ask you now at this time to please stand up and show your appreciation to all those who got you here. Uh, at this time, I call upon Mr. Heacock, head of school here at Crestwood, to introduce our guest speaker this evening. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as I was kind of researching and uh, kind of going back and remembering our guest speaker here, not only as a student, you know, as we start to search everybody's story and where they've been and you know where they are now. Um, I, was, I was really struck by looking at uh, Sean's uh, background here. So since leaving Crestwood in 2000 and, no, sorry, yeah, 2004, Sean spent time at uh, Carleton University earning a bachelor's degree in journalism, a honors of bachelor's of arts in English and history at York University, what is it, an accelerated diploma in journalism, and then to decide to round out his career, or at least at this point in education, a doctor of law from the University of Windsor. And where does that take you? Well, we look at Sean, and he spent time as an intern at, C at uh, CBC. He was a legal and HR coordinator, an associate at Taylor Law, an editor-in-chief for The Break Room, and is currently the owner and chief storyteller for The Right Stuff Agency. And with that, I'm going to bring us our, uh, our speaker for today, Sean Bernstein, class of 04. So first things first, that proves you can put anything on your LinkedIn and people will believe it. <laughs> Principal Peacock, teachers, including a few of my own, proud parents, family, and the graduates of 2023. I cannot begin to tell you what an honor it is to be standing here today. I know to you I look pretty old, but in my mind I'm still 17, and I'm nervously sitting in those very seats. It's surreal to remember that coming up on 20 years later, and in another life I'm old enough to be your father. <laughs> Unfortunately, my wife had to work tonight, but my mother's here, proudly beaming in the audience. Yes, you heard that right. I may no longer be in high school, but I couldn't get a date, so I brought my mother. <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same. I last stood on this stage as valedictorian in 2004, saying so long to each and every classmate as we headed off to start the rest of our lives. I've lost touch with a lot of those folks since, but what I can do here today is tell my story. If I had to give it a title, it would be Pivot. I tell you these stories not to flex, because for me it's just been a series of wild choices, but I hope that it shows some of the twists and turns that life takes, and sometimes how you choose to play the cards that you're dealt. The summer after I left that chair, I was headed off to pursue a Bachelor of Journalism at Carleton University in Ottawa. As the editor of the then Preparatory Post, now I believe the Crest Word, 
and my middle school paper before that, I thought that I was about to go pursue my destiny. Three months into school, just before midterm exams, I woke up in full body convulsions and was rushed to the eMERGE. My mother came to pick me up the next day, and I was whisked home practically overnight, where I was seriously ill for the next four months. While I was given an option to return, that illness was the reason for me leaving Carleton and leaving the journalism program that I had dreamed of attending. Pivot. Lessons. Don't sweat the small stuff. Sometimes things don't work out the way you plan, and that's okay. Take your health seriously. Science has come a long way, but we've only got this one body, so treat it well. Fast forward to finishing my undergraduate degree at York a few years later, which I chose because it was close enough to home in case something happened again, and I wasn't willing to risk going away. Not knowing what I wanted to do, but having a decent head on my shoulders, I wrote the LSATs, the law school admission test. Actually, I wrote them twice. Truth be told, I was in the middle of preparing for law school applications back in 2009 when I said, stop. Pivot. Lesson. Sometimes it's okay to admit when you're not ready to do something. If you rush into something that your gut tells you you're not ready for, it might be a rescue for disaster. In 2009, my university went on strike. 14 weeks without class sounds like a dream for a lot of you right now. But believe me, when we were trying to graduate, it was a logistical nightmare. In that time, I wound up hiring a career counselor who helped me run through a couple of exercises and then ultimately asked me the most basic question. She said, what do you really want to do? Without missing a beat, I said, I want to go back into journalism. She said, then go. Pivot. Lesson. Follow your dreams. They may lead you down a crazy path, but when it's all over, you don't want to regret not having taken that chance. Fast forward two years. I finished journalism school, worked my dream job, the internship at CBC Radio. Graduation day comes, and I can't find a job to save my soul. After a summer of looking and six years of post-secondary education, I had begun to apply to bookstores and coffee shops just to get some form of income. It was at that point, waking up at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday in the middle of an August afternoon, that I realized I had to pull my life back together. That same day, I signed up to take the LSATs once again and for another LSAT prep course. Lessons. Four of them this time. First, sometimes things just don't go your way. And that's okay, too. When you hit a brick wall, you can either go left or you can go right, as long as you keep going. Second, it's true what they say. Try, try again. If you work hard enough and keep your goals in sight, you'll get there. Third, it's always good to have a plan B, even if your plan B may be most people's plan A. Being resourceful makes it a lot easier to get through those hard times. Lastly, there is no shame in hard work. While bookstores and coffee shops may not have been the jobs that I had in mind, I was anything but embarrassed. After three years of law school in Canada, you generally need to find what is known as an articling position, or a 10-month apprenticeship, before you're called to the bar to become a lawyer. Finding articles was a really hard job hunt. At the time, there was a severe shortage of law firms willing to hire students. I met many senior lawyers who seemed to quite like me, and pledged that they would, quote, keep an eye out for any openings, but ultimately I kept coming up empty-handed. Finally, at a networking dinner, I met Devin, who had graduated from my same law school a few years earlier. Devin's advice that night changed the course of my life. She said, people who keep an eye open are helpful, sure, but, quote, you need a champion. A champion is someone who doesn't just have your best interests at heart, but who actively goes out of their way to help you succeed. Devin became my champion that night, and she ultimately introduced me to the lawyer who hired me for my articles. Lessons. Networking is a powerful tool. People need to know, like, and trust you in order to do business with you. Earnest networking is key for that first pillar. 
Second, find your champions. Supporters are great, but find the folks who will go out of their way to help you succeed. Then, once you do, pay it forward. Fast forward to graduating from law school, and I promise this is not the don't go to law school speech. I can give that one to your kids one-on-one -on -one after the ceremony, I promise. I landed my first role after six months of searching. I had a few offers, but I chose the firm that would let me really spread my wings and build up my own book of business. It was, in short, a disaster. I didn't realize going in that it takes years to build up your own list of clients, and it really helps with getting paid a base salary while you put that work in, which I wasn't. Six months in, I was drowning quickly, losing money, working for someone who was way over their head, and things got a little ugly. When I realized that I was being horribly devalued by the experience, I decided to walk away. Pivot. Lesson. Know your worth. Be realistic when it comes to numbers, but don't let yourself be subjected to someone who treats you as less than or doesn't realize what you can bring to the table. Not every job will be pretty, and not every work experience. In fact, I'd say no work experience is great 100% of the time. Yet when you're working for someone who purposely tries to dim your light, they'll end up succeeding. Don't let them. While doing some contract legal work, I've been working with a recruiter to help me try and find something. You'll meet a lot of recruiters in your life. They're a bit of a funny bunch sometimes. With the first job, the recruiter ghosted entirely and stopped taking my calls. Six months later, when that recruiter phoned me again to see if I was still looking, I was hesitant, but I said yes. It led me to an amazing, amazing opportunity at a Bay Street law firm, and not even when working as a lawyer. Lesson, give people a second chance when you have it in your heart. You'll get bitten sometimes, you'll get stung, although hopefully not too badly. You may not forget, but learning to forgive is a powerful tool going forward in your toolkit. It was working at that Bay Street job that I got a call about my dream firm, a place that I'd wanted to work at for several years, and the opportunity finally arose. The position was initially covering a colleague's mad leave, but I negotiated into a full-time role with no end date. As it turned out, that end date ended up coming from me. The pressures of practicing law took a real toll on me, and my mental health did a pretty rapid downslide. By the time summer rolled around, I wasn't in a good place, and I was having trouble to get through the days. That July, I went to see my doctor, I wound up taking a stress leave and not going back. Pivot. Lessons. All that glitters is not gold. When you want something in life, it's easy to put it on a pedestal. Whether it's a dream partner, a dream home, a dream job. Take a step back to evaluate if something is really the right decision for you. If it is, wonderful. Go for it. If it's not, you might save yourself a lot of headache and heartache. Second, it's okay not to be okay. Our understanding of mental health has come a long way in the last 20 years, and we're now recognizing that it's just as important as physical health. If you're struggling, seek help. With a physician, trained professional, a lot of us are fighting battles the rest of the world knows nothing about. That does not mean you have to fight them alone. Lastly, sometimes even your plan B doesn't work out. And that's okay too. Don't beat yourself up. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and figure out what comes next. As I headed back to contract work and tried to rebuild my mental health, I wondered what would come next. I had always written, from even before my days at Crestwood, and it was a constant theme throughout everything that I had done. Thankfully, I married a partner who was patient, kind, supportive, and smarter than I will ever be on my best day. I joke that I started my business by her elbowing me right in the ribs and saying, you're a writer, go and write. With that vote of confidence, I put up the most basic website one afternoon, set out some social media posts, promoting my services, and I haven't looked back. Four years later, as Principal Peacock mentioned, I'm now the owner and proud, the chief storyteller of the Right Stuff Agency, where I get to do exactly what I love. I'm lucky enough to work with amazing clients, when I have the opportunity to really help them tell their story. And that, my friends, is the ultimate pivot. 
lessons here. Sometimes your dreams don't look the same in reality as they do when you close your eyes. That's okay too. Stay open, stay curious, and if you have the chance to try something new, say yes. If you have the opportunity, find a partner who cares about you just as much as you care about yourself. You'll probably go through various relationships in life, some great, some not so great. But when you're looking to settle down, make sure it's with someone who places your best interests as their top priority, and vice versa. Lastly, you'll see from this story that I've got a bit of a pattern of betting on the wrong horse sometimes. But I've learned one thing is true. When you bet on yourself, you can't lose. And so do you, class of 2023. I leave you with the advice that my generation learned from a little cartoon show called Magic School Bus. The first one, not the reboot. Take chances, make mistakes, and get messy. The world is a crazy place, and none of us know what's coming next. But if you go out there with confidence, an open mind, and an open heart, you can really achieve anything. Thank you again for having me here today. I truly cannot tell you what this means to me. Thank you, Sean. This uh, brought back a little flashback from 19 years ago, listening to you as uh, you your valedictorian speech and again in the wonderful words of wisdom. Uh, parents, let's call upon your attention to some chairs over here on the side. There are four chairs at the front on the right side. Uh, please come up and take pictures during the ceremony. Uh, use them and then head back to your seat so others can use them during the ceremony as well. And they're there in reserve for, for that purpose tonight. Uh, at this point, I'd call upon some faculty members to present some Subject Achievement Awards uh, for the different uh, areas here at the school. Uh, our first set of awards are for the Arts. And to present the Arts Award, I'd call upon uh, Mrs. Piano to present three different Arts Awards. <laughs> right, we have one for Dramatic Arts, one for Music, and one for Visual Arts. And these awards are presented to the individuals who have produced an exemplary body of work demonstrate a dedication towards excellence in their artistic performances. Uh, our first award is for the Dramatic Arts, and this year's recipient is Kiara Codrick. The second arts award is for music, and the winner this year is Tal Schramm. Congratulations to this year's winner, Kiara Codron.
The English award is presented to the individual with the highest achievement in two of core English, English literature and writer's craft. To present the award, Ms. Young. Congratulations to the recipient, Madeline Tunes. Physical Education Award. And this award is presented to the individual with the highest achievement in health and physical education at 11 or 12 and exercise science. And congratulations to Ella Newton. Mathematics Award presented by Ms. O'Neill. Uh, this award is presented to the individual with the highest achievement in two of calculus and vectors, data management, and advanced functions. Congratulations to Isabella Wong. by Dr. Karish. This goes to the individual the highest in two of biology, chemistry, physics, and earth and space science. And congratulations to Jivan Tapani. Congratulations to Simran and Anand. <laughs> the 
And our final subject achievement award is for World Studies. And it goes to the highest, in, or highest achievement in two of economics, law, equity, and social justice, and world issues. Let's present the award, Mr. Masters. And congratulations to Madeline Tun. Congratulations to all our winners. A valedictorian is a graduating student chosen by his or her peers to address them at graduation. This person should be exemplary in many ways. He or she should be a high achiever, involved in school life, one who gets along well with both staff and fellow students, and is truly a representative of their peers. Some of the graduates would want to speak for them and to them. In grade 12, both the staff and the students vote on the valedictorian, and I'm pleased to announce the honor of this year to Madeline Tunnels. confidence in everyone here about the person who's about to give a speech, I'll introduce myself. My name is Madeline Tunz, and I've been entrusted with a microphone and creative privileges. And over the next few minutes, I intend to exploit my power as much as possible, while still making sure that I will be receiving my diploma later tonight. <laughs> Typically, when talking about the graduating class, words like enthusiastic, ambitious, involved, and other similar sentiments would be used to describe them. Now, does any of that apply to this graduating class? Were we really a bunch of go-getters? Our high school experience was definitely unconventional. I'm not going to take the time to recap the last few years, because, like, do we really want to do that again? If you want to take a solo walk down memory lane, you can do that. If you want to burn down memory lane with fire, I'll provide the kerosene. Whatever works best for you. Despite the numerous challenges, and they were numerous, all of us made it here today. We have completed high school, we're all graduating, and that is truly inspiring. To the teachers, thank you for putting up with us. Thank you for motivating us, either through genuine care or personal spite. Thank you for monitoring our shenanigans. It took a lot of work, and I mean a lot of work, to get us here. So thank you for your tireless participation. To my classmates, if you've procrastinated in expressing your gratitude, take a moment to thank the teachers up here who supported you, who cared about you, and who made your time here better. And also to my classmates, and I ask that everyone else please cover your ears because I'm only talking to graduates right now, so as you're eavesdropping, that's very rude of you. But just to my classmates, take a moment to internally, internally, Think about all the ones who challenged you, and tested you, and who you didn't particularly like. And in our heads, we can all think of the words of D-Generation X. Everyone needs a nemesis, so you can thank them for that. Yeah, thank you. But in all seriousness, find those who helped you and tell them thank you. There are people up here who do more than they'll ever get credit for. Remind them that they are appreciated. Just as a general rule in life, tell people thank you. For the big things, for the little things, tell people thank you. Tell them that they're important, tell them that you love them, tell them that you are grateful that they're a part of your life, even if they're not in your life forever. The impact people make will last longer than their presence, and the words you say to them will stick with them longer than you know. We can never fully measure the ways someone impacts us, nor can we ever fully understand how we impact another person. 
You are going to meet many people in your life. Some of them are gonna suck. A lot of them probably will. You might hate most of them. Honestly, I understand. I fully get it. They won't all be great. But some of them will be. No matter how independent and self-sufficient you want to be, you do need other people. And that is coming from someone who actively works to not interact with other people. I tried to make myself unapproachable so people wouldn't come and talk to me, and then people kept approaching me and being really nice to me, which is just so inconsiderate of all of them. So even if you prefer to stand in the corner, there's someone out there who will want to stand in the corner with you. Find your people. Find the people who cheer for you even when you're not around to hear them. Find those who applaud you for your success and stand beside you during your failures. Maybe you've already found some of them. Maybe you're still looking for them. Maybe they're looking for you. Neither of you know it, but you're both looking for each other. In your search to find those people, I ask one thing of you. And if you've taken away nothing from this absolutely killer speech, I ask you to listen to this life advice by someone who is totally qualified to give you life advice. And here it is. Never sacrifice who you are, because who you are is enough. There's no one right way to be a person. There's no one right way to do something. There's no one right way to achieve what you want to achieve. There are these ideas of what some sort of people look like, who they are, what they can do, and what they can accomplish. And that's all a lie. I'm a behind the scenes person. I'm introverted and quiet and reserved, and I will clearly do my own thing rather than follow the crowd. I don't talk to many people, I'm not extremely outgoing, and it's not like I'm well known for my naturally enthusiastic, charismatic, and bubbly personality. <laughs> that quiet behind the scenes person made it onto the stage, and they never changed who they were to make it feel. So Don't sacrifice who you are for what you want to be. Because you can be what you want to be while still being who you are. Don't ever sacrifice yourself for other people. Because there are people out there who are going to love you for exactly who you are. Not for who you were, not for who you can be, but for who you are. And you should be one of those people. Stand your ground. Say what you believe, even if your voice shakes. Don't let anyone ever tell you you're not good enough. Don't ever tell yourself you're not good enough. The world is not always nice, so be nice. Nancy Farmer wrote, No kindness is ever wasted, nor can we ever tell how much good may come from it. You leave more of an impact than you'll ever fully know. Work to make it positive. And in case no one has told you today, I'm really glad you're here. So let me feel you. That was amazing, Madeline. Uh, everything I expected, and a few things I didn't. Uh, and it's a true testament on why you were, you were selected, and you put your sister in tears up here. Uh, at this time, we'd like to call upon our graduates to uh, get ready for uh, receiving their diplomas. Uh, Mr. Hewhock, head of school, with diplomas, and to uh, let us a little bit, to let us know a little bit of our graduates, where they're going, their accomplishments. We have Mrs. Appleby, Ms. Geekus, and Ms. Somerville to read out. So information. Good evening. My name is Catherine Appleby and on behalf of the Guidance Department it is my honor and privilege 
to be presenting the class of 2023 with their graduation certificates alongside my colleagues, Christine Somerville and Eleni Gikas. We are so proud of our grade 12 graduating class and excited to see where they will or what they will accomplish in the years to come. Today, we will be issuing up to three culminating certificates. The first is the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, which is granted to all secondary graduates in the province who complete the curriculum. The second certificate is the Ontario Scholar Award. This award is presented to all high school graduates who attain an average of 80% or greater in their best six grade 12 courses. Finally, we have the Academic Achievement Award, which is presented annually to all graduates who achieved honor roll status in all eight terms from grade nine to 12 while at Crestwood. Graduates with this honor are wearing a silver cord on their gown today. Now please sit back, relax, and join in as we celebrate the grade 12s and all of their incredible accomplishments. Felix Abbott. Felix will be completing a fifth year to pursue NCAA athletic opportunities with a focus on basketball. Today he is earning his Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Jordan Adler. Jordan is off to Wilfrid Laurier University and the University of Waterloo to pursue a double degree in business and mathematics. He earned an entrance scholarship and today is going home with his diploma, scholar certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. John Albuquerque. John will be taking a gap year to pursue future studies in sports media. Today, he is taking home his Ontario Secondary School Diploma. Simran Anand. Simran is off to Boston University where she'll be studying molecular, bi molecular biology, cell biology, and biochemistry. Today, she earns her diploma, scholar certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. Maya Anderson. <laughs> Maya is off to San Jose State University where she'll be studying business administration and management. She was also awarded an athletic scholarship and will be joining the Spartans women's basketball team. <laughs> Today she earns her diploma and scholar certificate. Although not in attendance, we'd like to recognize Carter Andre, who will be attending the University of the Fraser Valley. Gregory Angelakos. Greg will be attending Toronto Metropolitan University, where he'll be studying politics and governance to the Faculty of Arts. He is also going to be playing on the TMU men's basketball team, and today is taking home his diploma and scholar certificate. <laughs> Sophia Armtudis. <laughs> Sophia will be off to Dalhousie University, where she'll be studying commerce through the co-op program. Today she earns her diploma, scholar certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. Sam Arvini. <laughs> Sam is off to the University of Toronto St. George where he'll be studying life science. Today he is earning his diploma, scholar certificate, and the academic achievement award. <laughs> Jean-Luc Odet. Jean-Luc is off to Queen's University where he'll be joining the computing program. Today he is earning his Diploma in Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Louis Bao. <laughs> Louis will be attending the 
University of Waterloo, where he'll be studying mathematics, financial analysis, and risk management. He was also awarded the President's Scholarship, and today is taking home his diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Not in attendance, we'd like to recognize Victor Bonsu, who moves off to Simon Fraser University. Jack Brannon. Jack will be attending Brock University, where he'll be studying sport management. He was also awarded the Brock Scholars Award, and today is taking home his diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Jamari Brown. <laughs> Jamari is off to St. Mary's University where he will be studying entrepreneurship, a part of the Faculty of Commerce. He was also awarded an athletic scholarship and will be joining the men's Huskies football team. Alana Burgess. <laughs> Alana is off to Dalhousie University where she'll be studying biology, a part of the Faculty of Science. Today she earns her diploma in Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Elaine Chen. Elaine is off to Queen's University where she'll be studying English to the Faculty of Arts. Today she is earning her Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Olivia Choda. <laughs> Olivia is off to Brock University where she'll be studying Sport Management. She was also awarded the Brock Scholars Award and today is taking home her diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Kiara Codron. <laughs> Kiara is off to McGill University where she'll be studying commerce. She was also awarded the McGill Entrance Scholarship and today is taking home her Diploma, Scholar Certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Noah Cooney. <laughs> Noah is off to Brock University where he'll be studying Sport Management. He was awarded the Brock Scholars Award, and today is taking home his diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Jordan Dixon. <laughs> Jordan will be returning for a fifth year to pursue prospective NCAA athletic opportunities with a focus on basketball. Today he's taking home his diploma and Scholar Certificate. Carrie Ann Engelberg. <laughs> Carrie Ann is off to Union College where she'll be studying arts and science. She was also awarded a full athletic scholarship and will be joining the Union Dutch Women Ice Hockey Team. Today she takes home her diploma, scholar certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Luis Espino Brandaza. Luis is off to the University of Toronto St. George where he'll be studying economics and philosophy through the social science department. Today he takes home his diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Nathan Galansky. Nathan will be attending Toronto Metropolitan University and studying business management. Today he has earned his diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate.
Evan Goldman. Evan is off to the University of Toronto St. George where he'll be studying life sciences. Today he is earning his diploma, scholar certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. Sophie Goodman. Queen's University where she'll be studying sociology through the Faculty of Arts. Today she is earning her diploma, scholar certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. Giancarlo Hayer. Giancarlo is off to the University of Waterloo where he'll be studying global business and digital arts. He was also awarded the President's Scholarship and today is taking home his Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Ben Halbert. Ben is off to OCAD University, where he'll be studying Digital Futures through the Faculty of Arts and Science. Today, he has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma. Noah Halili. <laughs> Noah is off to McGill University where he'll be studying economics through the Bachelor of Arts. Today he has earned his diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Virginia Howe. Virginia will be attending Western University, where she'll be studying Media, Information, and Technoculture. Today she earns her Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Taylor Howell. <laughs> Taylor will be attending Brock University, where she'll be studying Interactive Arts and Science. She was also awarded the Brock Scholars Award and today takes home her Diploma, Scholar Certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. Ryder Jennings. This fall, Ryder is off to the University of Toronto St. George campus where he'll be studying the humanities. Ryder is also awarded a new college admission scholarship and today has earned his diploma, scholar certificate, and academic achievement award. <laughs> Nate Kang. Nate will be attending the University of Guelph, where he'll be studying kinesiology with a focus on human kinetics. Today, Nate has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma. <laughs> Cecile Laredo Markovitz. This September, Cecile will be attending OCAD University, where she'll be studying environmental design. Today, Cecile has earned her Ontario Secondary School Diploma. <laughs> Michael Lawson. This fall, Michael will be attending the University of Toronto Scarborough, where he'll be studying management with the co-op program. Michael was also awarded an admission scholarship and today has earned his diploma and scholar certificate. <laughs> Sandy Lee. This September, Sandy is off to the University of British Columbia, where she'll be studying psychology through the Bachelor of Arts. 
Today, Sandy has earned her Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Stephen Lee. <laughs> this fall, Stephen will be attending the University of Toronto Mississauga campus where he'll be studying commerce. Today, Stephen has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. John Lindell. John is off to the University of Guelph, where he'll be studying commerce with a focus in on government, economics, and management. John was also awarded an entrance scholarship and today has earned his diploma and graduate, uh, sorry, and scholar certificate. <laughs> Betty Liu. <laughs> this fall, Betty will be headed to the Rhode Island School of Design where she'll be studying illustration. Today, Betty has earned her diploma, her scholar certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Maya Lucifora. <laughs> Maya will be attending the University of British Columbia, where she'll be studying psychology through the Bachelor of Arts program. Maya was also awarded an athletic scholarship and will be joining the Thunderbirds women's hockey team. <laughs> Maya has earned her diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Jacob Mahone. <laughs> this fall, Jacob will be attending York University, where he'll be studying commerce through the Faculty of Liberal Arts and Professional Studies. Today, Jacob has earned his diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Luke Malkazian. This fall, Luke will be taking a gap year to pursue prospective NCAA opportunities with a focus in on hockey. Today, Luke has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Paige Nikosis Adderley. This fall, Tage will be attending Sheridan College, where she'll be studying kinesiology and health promotion. Tage will also, was also awarded an athletic and academic scholarship and will be joining the Sheridan Bruins basketball team. <laughs> Tage is in her diploma and scholar certificate. Nathan McLean. This fall, Nathan will be attending Kimball Union Academy, where he will be pursuing prospective NCAA opportunities with a focus in on hockey. Today, Nathan has earned his diploma, his scholar certificate, and academic achievement award. <laughs> Daniel McVeigh. This fall, Daniel will be attending the University of Guelph, where he'll be studying music through the Bachelor of Arts. Today, Daniel has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Arian May. This fall, Arian is off to McGill University, where he'll be studying political science through the Bachelor of Arts. Today, Arian has earned his diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Clayton <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> this 
This fall, they will be attending Huron at Western University, where he'll be studying political sciences through the social science faculty. Clayton was also awarded an entrance scholarship and today has earned his diploma and scholar certificate. <laughs> Iona McKellis. This fall, Iona will be off to the University of Toronto St. George campus, where she'll be studying sociology through the Faculty of Humanities. Today, she has earned her diploma and scholar certificate. <laughs> Justice Miller. Justice will be taking a fifth year to explore prospective NCAA opportunities with a focus in on basketball. Today, Justice has earned her Ontario Secondary School Diploma. <laughs> Ji Wong Min. This fall, Ji Wong will be attending York University where she'll be studying engineering. Ji Wong was also awarded an entrance scholarship and today has earned her diploma, her scholar certificate, and Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Abby Mintz. <laughs> this September, Abby is off to Brock University where she'll be studying Critical Criminology through the Faculty of Social Sciences. Today, Abby has earned her Ontario Secondary School Diploma. Matt Muramoto. This fall, Matt will be attending the University of Toronto Scarborough campus, where he'll be studying the life sciences with a focus in on neuroscience. Today, Matt has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Alec <laughs> Nakukian. This September, Alec will be off to Queen's University where he'll be studying computer computing. Today, he has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Ali Nakmakian. This fall, Aline will be attending OCAD University, where she'll be studying experimental animation through the Faculty of Fine Arts. Today, Aline has earned her Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Jacelyn Nye. This fall, Jacelyn is off to the University of Waterloo, where she'll be studying accounting and financial man management through the co-op program. Jacelyn was also awarded the President's Scholarship and today has earned her diploma and graduate certificate and scholar certificate. <laughs> Ella Newton. Paula will be attending Queen's University, where she'll be studying kinesiology through the Faculty of Science. Today, Ella has earned her diploma, her scholar certificate, and academic achievement award. <laughs> Kaylee Patience. This September, Kaylee is off to St. Francis Xavier University, where she'll be studying anthropology through the Faculty of Arts. Today, Kaylee has earned her diploma and scholar certificate. Constantine Patrick. 
Katrina Nakos. This fall, Constantine will be attending Wilfrid Laurier University, where he'll be studying game design and development. Today, Constantine has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma. Adam Perlman. In the fall, Adam will continue to play for TFC while attending Toronto Metropolitan University while studying business management. Adam was awarded an entrance scholarship and today has earned his diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Evan Prosserman. This September, Evan is off to Queen's University where he'll be studying engineering for the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science. Today, Evan has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma, Scholar Certificate, and Academic Achievement Award. Tony Chi. In September, Tony is headed to the University of Southern California, where he'll be studying mathematics and economics. Today, he has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma, Scholar Certificate, and Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Saladin Qureshi. This fall, Saladin will be attending York University, where he will be studying kinesiology and health sciences. Today, Saladin has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma. Hayden Schneider. Hayden will be going to Western University this fall, studying social science and in the IBHBA program. He also earned the Western Scholarship of Distinction. Today, he's going to go home with uh, his diploma, the Ontario Scholar Certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Henry Shee. Henry will be going to the University of British Columbia this fall and he is studying computer science in the Bachelor of Science uh, program. He's achieved his diploma, Ontario Scholar Certificate and the Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Tal Schramm. <laughs> Tal will be going to Queen's University studying engineering through the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science. He's going home today with his diploma, Ontario Scholar Certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Tyler Spencer. In the fall, Tyler will be studying Business and Law at Seton Hall University. He also earned the award of matter and he is going home today with his Ontario Secondary School Diploma and the Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Tasha Santa Maria. In the fall, Tasha will be going to Fresno State University, studying sports administration through the Faculty of Kinesiology. She's earned an athletic scholarship and will be playing with the Bulldogs women's basketball team. She's going home today with her Ontario Scholarship Certificate and the Ontario Secondary School Diploma. Mark Starkman. Mark's going to Queens this fall and he'll be studying psychology through the Faculty of Arts and today he's going home with his secondary school diploma and the Ontario Scholar Certificate. Landon Sterling. 
Lanny will be going to Huron at Western University this fall, studying social science. He's earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma and he's a few, um, his Ontario Scholar Certificate. Theo Stu. Theo will be balancing plates on his, no, I'm just kidding. Theo will be going to the Toronto Metropolitan University studying business management, and he has earned the Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Jason Tang. Jason will be going to the University of Waterloo studying mathematics through the co-op program. He also was um, issued the President's Scholarship and is going home today with the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, Ontario Scholar Certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Jeevan Tapanya. Jeevan will be going to the University of Waterloo this fall, studying mechanical engineering in the co-op program. He's earned the President's Scholarship with distinction, and he's going home with his Diploma, Ontario Scholar, and Academic Award Certificate. <laughs> Jace Todd. Jace will be going to Western University this fall studying Management and Organizational Studies in, in the IB and the IB IB program. He's earned his Western Scholarship of Distinction and tonight he's going home with his Ontario Secondary School Diploma, Ontario Scholar Certificate and the Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Madeline Hines. Madeline will be going to the University of Charles Humber, and she will be studying in the Honors Bachelor of Applied Science in Community Social Sciences and Social Service Worker Diploma. That's a time. <laughs> she has earned the Founders Academic Merit Scholarship and is also going home tonight with her Diploma, Ontario Scholar Certificate, and Academic Achievement Award. Kim Turpentin. Kim will be going to the University of King's College in her foundation year um, through the Bachelor of Arts. She is going home today with their Ontario Secondary School Diploma and the Ontario Scholar Certificate. Kai <laughs> Yulok. Kai will be going to York University this fall, where he will study music in the Faculty of School of Arts, Media, Performance, and Design, and he has earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma. <laughs> Alex Wagner. <laughs> Alex will be going to the University of Toronto studying kinesiology in the Faculty of Kinesiology and Physical Education, He's also earned his Ontario Secondary School Diploma, Ontario Scholar Certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Henry Wang. Wong, I beg your pardon. Henry Wong. Henry will going to the University of Waterloo, studying Mathematics and Business Administration in the co-op program. He also earned the President's Scholarship. Today he's going home with his Diploma, Ontario Scholar Certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. Isabella Wong. Isabella is going to the University of Waterloo, studying Mathematics in the Co-op Program, and she's also earned a very, uh, the President's Scholarship with Distinction, and has, is going home to this evening with her Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Jessica Wong. 
just before the McGill in the fall, studying commerce through the Faculty of Management. She's going home tonight with her Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. And <laughs> Dylan Wilkinson. Dylan will be going to York University this fall, studying kinesiology and health science. He's earned an entrance scholarship and is going home tonight with the Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. Ian Wong. Ian's going to Dalhousie University in the fall, studying marine biology through the Faculty of Science, and he is going home tonight with his Ontario Secondary School Diploma and Ontario Scholar Certificate. <laughs> Jack Wu. <laughs> Jack is going to the University of Waterloo this fall, studying mathematics, financial analysis, and risk management in the cooperative program. He's earned the President Scholarship and is going home tonight with his Diploma, Ontario Scholar Certificate, and Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> Although not in attendance this evening, we'd like to recognize Alan Shing. He's going to the University of Toronto and studying commerce this fall. Also not in attendance is Haley Shu, um, and we'd like to acknowledge her this evening by showing you that she's going to the University of Washington studying economics through the Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Kyle Yap. <laughs> Kyle will be going to the University of Toronto studying computer science through the co-op program and received an entrance scholarship. He's going home with his diploma. Ontario Scholar Certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. <laughs> also not in attendance, and someone we'd like to recognize is Mandy Ewan. She will be going to the University of Toronto, studying Communications, Culture, and Information Technology. <laughs> Evan Jane. Computer Engineering in the Co-op Program at the University of Waterloo. He earned the President's Scholarship and also is going home tonight with the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, Ontario Scholar Certificate, and the Academic Achievement Award. Okay, Grade 12s, this is it. I would like to ask the Grade 12s to please stand up. In a moment, I will ask you to move your tassel from the right side to the left side. Ladies and gentlemen, by moving the tassel to the left after graduating is symbolic of crossing over from high school to the next stage in your life. So, class of 2023, please move your tassel over to the left side. Continuing on as a grade 10 and 11 student. This year's recipient 
Is that what it is? National Book Award. To present this award, we call upon Ms. Appleby. And this award is presented by the University of Toronto in recognition of an individual's exceptional abilities, both personal and academic, in the eyes of the school and the university. Congratulations to Simran and Anand. The Lieutenant Governor's Community Volunteer Award for students goes to a graduating grade 12 student for their exemplary community contributions or outstanding achievement through volunteer activity. To present the award is Ms. Somerville. And this year's recipient is Madeline Tunz. Sport Award. It's presented by the Ontario Federation of School of Athletic Associations to a grade 12 male and female student whose academic achievements are above average and who wrote, throughout their high school career have been committed to the success of school sport at their school, within their association, and who are leaders in the area of academics. This year's recipients are Sophie Goodman and Noah Cooney. presents this award to annually to a graduating grade 12 student who daily demonstrates the traits of honesty, integrity, kindness, consideration, and de dedication, as well as a sense of community and involvement at the school. These qualities were evident in the late Bob Thomas, a faculty member here at Crestwood Preparatory College. Congratulations to this year's recipient, Olivia Choda. by the graduating class themselves and is presented annually to a student who embodies the spirit of Crestwood student. Congratulations to Greg Rake and Joachim. Governor General's Academic Medal. This award goes to a student 
uh, in grade 12 with the highest average of all of their grade 11 and 12 courses combined. Uh, some years this recipient is different, but this year the recipient is the same. Congratulations, TKR Carter. Our final set of awards were introduced uh, to Crestwood in 2016, and it's called the Crestwood Prepared Heart College Diploma. And it recognizes individuals who become well-rounded and involved in the school here in many ways. To earn this diploma, students have to complete additional community service hours uh, every year, uh, must take additional credits in all the disciplines beyond the required courses, must participate in at least one co-curricular activity every year during their high school career. This year, Mr. Pitel will present the award to five individuals. Uh, the first individual, John Lindell. <laughs> Our second recipient, Clayton Melbourne. Our third winner, Ella Newton. <laughs> Our fourth recipient, Madeline Tynes. Our final recipient, Henry Wong. Congratulations. At this point, we call upon Mr. Heacock to say a few words to our graduates. I'm really going to have to think twice about having a storyteller and a playwright uh, you know, come and speak before I do any closings here, so I'm going to be brief. Graduate. <laughs> All right, where else? Uh, graduation is a time for reflection, living in the moment and in the future. Let's take a second to reflect on the challenging courses, the late night study, the encouraging words from families, friends, and teachers to that cultivating victory that is today's event. And now, today, we sit here with you in your Crestwood blue and gray tassels. Now take a moment and look at the staff and the colors that they are wearing. Each color that we are wearing represent our educational moments. These are the colors, these colors are also part of our, of our educational evolution from high school to undergrad and beyond. I'm already looking forward to seeing you in your new colors. And now it is time to look forward and embrace the future. You have already set your goals and while this end is coming into focus, it is not crystallized until you've experienced it. And that moment will pass and we look forward again. While all this is happening, please remember Save time for us in your future as you return as Crestwood alumni. Congratulations, class of 2023.
Just a few more things, I promise. All right, first of all, a reminder for our graduates. Um, after the ceremony, please feel free to take your photos in your gowns. Uh, but please remember to return your gowns, hang them up, and collect your envelopes with your real diplomas and all the real things in them. And yes, those brown, blue pieces of paper are just there for you to fidget with for the past half an hour. Um, there are several groups of people I'd like to thank today for making the ceremony possible. Uh, first to Mr. Mariano and the students here who joined us and gave up their time. Next is the group of teachers who helped put the ceremony together, Mr. Joel, Mrs. Santomero, Ms. Lyons, and Ms. Pagano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wong, for taking all the photos that you'll be sharing with everyone uh, through an email later this week. Uh, and to all the teachers helping out in the rooms before, giving out the gowns, collecting them, thank you. Uh, thank you to Airmark for all the food we're going to enjoy in a few moments. So thank you, and when you see them, I'll pass on some thanks to them as well. Um, as we come to a close of the ceremony, I'd like to draw attention to all the uh, plants around the stage here. Um, each one of these plants has a name of our graduate on them. Uh, they are a metaphor for you and your time here at the school. Uh, we'd like you to take them home, uh, plant them at home somewhere, a cottage, somewhere in your backyard, um, and watch them grow just as you have grown here. Uh, and use it as a memory to come back and see us here and remember your time here at Crestwood. Uh, so please remember after the ceremony, come back, find your uh, plant with your name on it. I believe they start at that end with the A's and go all the way around here, so uh, just look for your name uh, and uh, take them home and, and plant them. Once again, congratulations to our graduates. Thank you everyone for attending today. Uh, it's been an amazing uh, year for everyone and congratulations.